In this video, we're going to cover the timer zero use case, switching a timer period between 100 and 500 milliseconds when a switch is pressed. So at the end of this use case, you will see that we'll be able to change the period of an LED toggling every time we push a button. We'll visualize it on the data visualizer and use the power debugger for extra debug I.O. Let's look again at the timer use cases. So my project setup will be that of the 100 millisecond timer to start with, but the use case is standalone. So if you come into this use case, you will see all the settings which are needed. We can see that we are in 16 bit mode now. We use a switch pin and we'll check our schematics for that to decide whether we need a pull up and whether to sense on positive or negative. First we change to 16-bit mode. Here immediately you see that we can handle a much longer timeout so we can switch down without a prescaler and we easily can handle the 500 milliseconds. Going to the kit window schematics, if you use the first use case you would see that we had set up a LED which is on RC1 and the switch on RC0. But also note that our debug GPIO was on RC0. So since we are now using the switch, we won't be able to use the debug GPIO for any other functions. So the user button, uh, we push this button in and we pull the pin to ground. And also note that we'll need a, a pull up on the pin. So coming back to our pins, we'll call the switch now. And we're going to want to pull up and negative. So as we push the pin in, we get an interrupt on change. And we want that as an input now. OK, we generate code. But that, that line of code is now invalid. OK, so we had this from before the timer interface. There are some defines for the number of counts for 100 and 500 milliseconds, a flag for change period. Go back and take the next code snippet, replacing the existing callback for the timer, and then we go and get the main, which we'll replace as well. So with the switch callback, we set a flag for change period. In main, we check that flag, and if we sense that that's been set, we change the frequency. We stop the timer, reset it, because we could come in here at any point in the timer, and so we'll restart the timer, set the period to the new value, then after that, start the timer again. Okay, so we'll program. Okay, coming to the data visualizer, we can start plotting some pins. We actually want a separate plot. Okay. Okay, so as we start pushing the button, it seems that we have the behavior as expected. So let's have a look and see if we can refactor this application. And instead of a 16-bit timer, use an 8-bit timer. So when we go to 8-bit, we need to have a much larger prescaler than what we had before. Here, 64, we can get to 500 milliseconds. So we can generate code and come have a look at timer 0 and see that 2f is what is set up there. So 2f for 100 milliseconds and for 500 milliseconds generate come into timer 0 and it's f1. So
2f and f1. We can leave this as starting at 100 milliseconds, just to be consistent, and program our board. After refactoring, one can see that we have the same behavior as before. So this use case has demonstrated how you can easily change timer periods at runtime.